Uh, dear all, uh, peasants, uh, fishers, pastoralists, and smallholder farmers in rural areas, you produce most of the healthy and diverse food that we eat every day. While agriculture has an important role in shaping rural landscapes, its weight in rural economies is often low and rural workforce that is employed in agriculture is declining. This weaker economic performance is driven by a number of factors such as out-migration due to economic globalization, aggressive increase of industrial agriculture, increased price of farmlands, aging, lack of social protection, overall low levels of investment of public services. There is also an unfortunate discrimination that has been prevalent since the modernity shifted the economy's interests from rural areas and agriculture to cities and industrialization. Despite its declining gross value added, agriculture continues to have an important influence on the rural economy. Still, people who live in rural areas are producing 70% of food that consumed globally, cultivating less than 30% of the land. Most of them are subsistence farmers that they are struggling to feed themselves and their families without having secure access to land, water, seeds, credits, tools, and technology. In Europe, more than even Europe, in more than 50% of smallholder farmers are from rural areas, yet peasant organizations do not have effective voices on European common agricultural policy, while in some countries peasants are criminalized when they try to defend their livelihood, right to food, and land rights. Moreover, the negative impact of climate change on crop yields is enormous, let alone dealing with extreme weather events such as multiple years of drought, floods and hurricanes, one after another threatening livelihoods of people who are living in risky places and already are poor and food insecure. The El Nino has devastating impact on rural communities in Africa, South Asia and Latin America. Many of the countries in sub-Saharan Africa, 100 million people now under the threat of slashing toward the famine that we thought famine is behind us after aftermath of the Second World War. On one hand, we are dealing with extreme food insecurity and starvation. On the other hand, natural resources are subject to foreign extractive activities from mining to industrial agriculture that push out local residents and peasants from their land and violate their fundamental human rights and their livelihood. Against this background, there is nothing more timely and urgent than to acknowledge peasants' human rights, support the declaration that will provide stronger legal entitlement in the future. The draft peasant declaration has long history almost two decades, and Right to Food Special Rapporteurs always supported this initiative. Most recently, in September, the peasants, last September, in Peasants' Rights Declaration, La Via Campesina, Fian, Chetim, and its partners are pleased to announce the adoption of the Peasants' Rights Declaration by the UN Human Rights Council, by 34 votes in favor, 11 abstentions, and two against. After this important step, the negotiations of the declaration will continue in 2018. Unfortunately, European countries did not support the declaration except Portugal. This is not somewhat surprising considering that the European countries are not also supporting right to food as a fundamental human rights, despite their international human rights commitments in general. While the Declaration put together many of the principles and rules of the international human rights law documents, including women's rights and children's rights, as well as various voluntary guidelines of the FAO and the World Committee of Food Security, some of the rights are derivative from other rights or interpretation of the rights that are already existed. The Declaration also includes some principles that is relevant to livelihood of peasants, such as labor rights, environmental rights, biological diversity, access to seeds, land and water, social security, and finally food sovereignty. All these rights are crucial for the fulfillment of 
of rural people's rights. Food sovereignty is simply derivative from general concept of sovereignty that gives power to peasants to make their own decision about the way in which what, how, and when to produce food and feed themselves. It is considered now communal or collective rights, as well as individual rights and food sovereignty movement is becoming one of the most influential global peasants movement. The ownership of our seed is very important for food sovereignty and protection of biodiversity. Without it, use, reuse, grow, store, develop, exchange, give or sell seeds are simply not possible. This right now is threatening by the oligopolic companies and powerful states under the name of copyrights protection. Therefore, it's vitally important to support peasant seed banks and conservation against genetically engineered industrial seeds. Just a week ago, the seventh, seventh meeting of the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture met in Kigali, Rwanda. There's a risk that new genetic technologies will take over the treaty's well-established principles leaving small farmers without any protection. La Via Campesina and other partners of peasants' movement are to defend their rights. Big agribusiness is penetrating entire food chains, not only seeds, but also land, water, chemicals, land transportation and supermarket chains. They are also very influential over national and global regulatory institutions and scientific researchers. The courts are the only places that people still can resist against such conglomerates. Transnational corporations use every opportunity with their powerful legal team to sue local communities when they receive resistance. Therefore, legal protection of right to food and access to justice is vitally important and peasant movements should go after these injustices wherever it occurs. Therefore, peasant declaration is important. It gives little ent legal entitlement to communities against powerful human rights violators. But this is not enough. There is a need, a binding global treaty on transnational companies. Industrial agriculture is very detrimental, not only smallholder farmers, but also natural resources. Alternative to such dangerous agriculture is agroecology, which main production method of food sovereignty and implemented by peasants in many parts of the world. Agroecology is the indigenous, ancestral and popular peasant knowledge that have been accumulated for generations. It is particularly important in times of climate change if we really want to mitigate the adverse impact of the climate change on food production. As of today, the UN Clim Climate Change Convention's COP23 is about to end in Germany. We witnessed the terrible impact of the hurricanes in various parts of the world, from India to Puerto Rico, from Honduras to Vietnam. It's almost unimaginable how many hurricanes we will witness in one week. Victims of such weather events are always already poor, food insecure, vulnerable peasants, fisher folks, women and children. Is there a way to make perpetrators of the climate change industrial countries to pay for these damages? That's why we need global peasants' movements voice. There are the the voice there are at the COP and other global platforms to be heard over and over again what global community's responsibility is. This is why your meeting is so important and I always support your message to be heard even further. Thank you very much.